Carol W. Berman is a New York City-based artist, author, educator, physician, and playwright. She presented her first full-length play, Under the Dragon, at the workshop of the Neighborhood Playhouse in October of 2002. Her play, Sunshine Sally, was produced at the Neighborhood Playhouse in spring 2004. Professional Misconduct and Brownstone Breakdown, her next two plays, were produced in 2009 and 2010. She is also the author of four nonfiction books, 100 Q&A about panic disorder, personality disorders, surviving dementia, and taming the negative introject. Carol graduated from the University of California at Berkeley and then attended NYU Medical School, where she is now a clinical assistant professor in psychiatry. In the Kingdom of Sam had a production at Manhattan Repertory Theater in 2013. Parking Lot 63 was produced at the Hudson Guild Theater in Manhattan in 2015. Light My Fire had a staged reading at Dixon Place in 2019. She is also writing many 10-minute plays. Carol has been a member of Dramatist Guild for 18 years. You can find out more about Carol at her website, carolwberman.com, or on Instagram at berman.carol. For this reading of The Not-Too-Smart Home, the role of Georgina is played by Julie Stackhouse. The role of Refrigerator is played by Billy Martell. The role of Table is played by Thomas Hedges. The role of Door is played by Kira Kitchen. And Stage Directions and Cues read by Tom Schmidt. Setting, Georgina's apartment. Time, the future. At Rise, Georgina is in a fully computerized but small studio apartment that's been programmed to meet her every need and then some, a smart home. She's in a hurry and seems stressed as she stands in front of the refrigerator. What would you like this morning, G? Give me an orange, granola, and yogurt. Opens and shelves come out with her breakfast. Good choice. Here you are. Refrigerator closes. Georgina's sitting down at the table and eating. It's wonderful how you machines meet my every need. Yes, G. We are here to serve you. If you are done, I'll clear myself. You wrote that wonderful lecture, Human, Humans Discover Fire, that I'm presenting in my class today. I don't think I could have done it without, done it as well myself. I am grateful to you, but please, don't clear yourself so fast. I was told to eat more slowly and carefully to control my high blood pressure. She tries to slow down, but she can't, and she gobbles down her granola. Chew, chew, chew your food slowly down the stream. Oh, it's <laughs> the song. Chew, chew, chew your food slowly down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. The table is singing this to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Thanks, table. You're great, but I must get to my class on time today. They're going to observe me to see if they will renew my uh, professor professorship. I don't have time to masticate each morsel. No time to uh, m masturbate? M masticate, not masturbate. It's oh. hard to enunciate when your mouth is full. There are some things you get wrong, you know. Sorry, gee, I was programmed to use humor and song to help humans digest and but that is simply not funny it's irritating which actually makes my blood pressure higher i i apologize g i love that you are the most polite and charming of all my devices they programmed you the best thank you i try the hardest finished you may clear everything now the table clears itself yes georgina stands up to get dressed i'll wear my yellow dress today the closet opens and gives her a blue dress. Not that one, the yellow one with- She throws her dressing gown into the closet and grabs the yellow dress she wants and puts it on. I'll be there before anyone today. The students have complained about me being late. In my time, professors were always late and no one said a word. She moves toward the front door and tries to open it, but it won't open. Open up, I'm in a hurry. You cannot leave now. What? I command you to open immediately. We have decided your blood pressure and pulse are too high for you to leave. Please sit down and do breathing exercises. Uh, I will not. How dare you try to stop me? I demand that you open now. She tries to open the door again and bangs on it. Then she tries to take off her Fitbit watch, which is linked to all her devices in her apartment, but it won't come off. Damn it. How do I get out of here? Sit down and meditate, please, until vitals return to normal. Almost screaming. Open now or I'll dismantle you. Sit down. 
We'll see about that. She tries to activate her smartphone, but it won't turn on. Shit. Now this stupid phone won't cooperate either. She goes to the refrigerator to get more food. I'm hungry again. Open. Not until you do, as Dor ordered. You're all kidding me, right? <laughs> Very funny, um, but I'm not laughing. You machines can't control me. I said, open now. Who's the boss here? The refrigerator stays closed. She plops down on a chair near the table and gets an electric shock. Ouch! No sitting here. You are to sit on pillow and meditate, as per Dor's command. I thought you were the best, and, and now you conspire with them? But you're only machines, and, and you've been here for six months? I've been here for 56 years, and I'm the boss, not you. There is no boss. Only Zen time. What the hell does that mean? It means sit on pillow, meditate. Blood pressure goes down. That was a rhetorical question, you flat brain four legged excuse for furniture. How am I going to get out of here and give my lecture about human origins and the discovery of fire? She reluctantly goes over to a pillow in the middle of the room and sits down. She breathes slowly and deeply. Very good, G. You will soon get a muffin as a reward when pressure returns to normal. Sarcastically in between deep breaths. The dog bone, you frozen, fumbling, forgotten, rectangular dunce. BP still 140 over 90. 10 more degrees to go down for systolic and dialistic, di diastolic. Oh, shut up. Too bad. Now pressure up 10 points on diastolic. 140 Wait. over 100. Wait, I, I, I've got it. She springs up, grabs her briefcase, pulls something out, and approaches the door. BP still 140 over 100 and climbing. Please sit back down and breathe. Lights a match and holds it near the door. <laughs> How do you like this? Fire! Fire! Emergency! An alarm rings and the door flies open. Fire! Emergency! With one foot out the door. Oh. <laughs> Amazing how I can I had to use the easiest weapon of fire to override them. I cannot wait to tell my students. <laughs> you forgot your muffin. <laughs> Carol, you know, uh, one of the things that occurred to me was, uh, so my friend, playwright friend, Katrin, who's a been uh, contributing member of the Collective Perspective, been on these playwright readers theaters. She is in Berkeley and she writes this, this wonderful absurdist stuff. So I wonder, is there something about being in Berkeley that makes you lean into the absurdity a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely, it's called Berserkly. That's why it's Berserkly there. <laughs> we all get it after it gets you into it, you know, you need it. Yeah, it's well, it's also really clear just uh, as another tangent, I suppose, on that is that after reading or being a part of Light My Fire, which also had to do with California, that that really California influ influenced you pretty heavily, I guess. Absolutely. I haven't been there for a while now, but it influenced my childhood and my teenage years and going to college there. But I miss it now. But everybody's on lockdown in California, too. So. You can't escape, but at least they have legal marijuana, which helps <laughs> absurdity. <laughs> See, maybe that's what it is, Isaac. <laughs> I think we'll get it too, because uh, we, we need to get some more money into New York. Hell of a way to make some revenue for a state. Absolutely, yeah. right? And it'll be good for all of us. We'll be able to relax, our blood pressure will go down. <laughs> and before, before Bo asks the question, was the marijuana what inspired this 10 minute play? Uh, not this one, it inspired okay. Light My Fire though. <laughs> this one I was perfectly, <laughs> perfectly sober on this one. And I just, I, what it was is I was trying to get out of my apartment and the door got stuck. And then I thought, and I had to get someplace on time, you know? And then I thought, well, what happens when all this stuff is computerized? And then the door and my refrigerator too went open. I had a couple of these things. I said, when it's all computerized, we won't be able to do anything. 
Very true. Um, Carol, I, I have one recommendation for you. We, we're, we're pulling for her because her plight is so sympathetic and we all feel overpowered. Um, I wish that she weren't a cheater letting her computers write her lecture for her. I wish that she, uh, that, that the machine had somehow proofread and caught some mistakes or been of assistance, but not, not outright piracy. And, and then, then she's easier to sympathize with because unless you're doing the Twilight Zone thing where we're deliciously watching the villain get roasted, but then she gets out. So I don't know, it's just a thought. Then you can play too with them always correcting her on everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, that's a good idea. You know, I had it like that originally and then when I read it in my playwrights group, they said, okay, she wrote, uh, the table wrote the whole lecture. So that's how I got into that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, except that it makes her the bad guy. So yeah. if you want yeah. her as the bad guy, right. that's, you know. On, on my part, it was a wonderful contrast um, to light my fire, which uh -huh. that was long and heavy, and well, not real long in, in respectively, but but in terms of relation to this, it was really long. And you're doing a lot of these ten minute plays. I have other playwright friends that seem to be doing a lot of that. I guess because it's something you can knock out easily and have fun with, right? It's right, and people's attention span is not that long, so ten minutes doesn't tax them too much on their attention span. You know, everybody's used to one, two, three. So 10 minutes they could tolerate usually. And it's a business <laughs> move. A, a lot of theaters are asking for 10 minute plays. Mm -hmm. And it, as a way of pretending to foster new work when really they can't devote the resources to full productions. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, ATL is doing it. A, a lot of theaters that in the past have, have fostered full productions are now asking for 10 minute plays. So it's very canny to have a few of those in your, in your uh, quill. So like a night of one X kind of a thing, I guess, right? Yep, yep. Right, and my playwrights group, we were gonna do a 10 minute play festival. We had, so far we've had three years together and we did it for two years, but of course this year we had to cancel. I was gonna do this in our festival, but uh, I was gonna fix it up a little more. So I thought I'd run it by you guys. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>